Hello, everyone. Welcome to the today's multi-scale talk given by Dr. Mohamed Salehizadeh. Dr. Mohamed Salehizadeh is a postdoctoral research fellow at Harvard Medical School. His main research interest is in medical microrobotics and general surgical robotics. Before joining Harvard, Mohamed did his PhD at the University of Toronto in mechatronics and robotics. Today, Dr. Saleh Hizadeh is going to talk about control of multiple magnetic micro-robots for biomedical applications. So Dr. Mohamed, the screen is yours. Thank you very much, Zoran. I'm going to share my screen. Can you see my first slideshow? Yep, I can see. Awesome. Hello, everyone. Thanks again, Zoran, for inviting me to multi-scale talk. And it's a pleasure to be with everyone here. My name is Mohammed, and currently I'm doing my postdoc at Harvard Medical School. Um, before I start my talk, just a quick uh, overview of my education tree. I was born in the city of Isfahan, right in the middle of Iran, and then I began uh, my Master of Science Studies at Concordia University in Montreal, Canada, continued um, in Toronto. I finished my PhD there, and right now I am in Harvard Medical School. Today, I will be talking about how to accomplish the independent motion control of multiple magnetic microbots, mainly in close proximity, which was conducted in microrobotics laboratory under supervision of Professor Eric Deller here, whom I owe my success to excellent supervisors like him. My hope is that our audience after watching this presentation could benefit from the benefits of this research into their own, uh, their own work. And here you can find the link to my thesis and three main journals. Just a brief introduction. Uh, my PhD work um, seeks uh, fundamental control tools to solve the underactuated control problem of multiple magnetic micro robots, which are most suitable for biomedical applications, including medical robotics and targeted drug delivery. There are primarily, there have been two primary challenges with magnetic team control uh, behind my project. First of all, the system of uh, a team of micro robots becomes highly underactuated as the number of agents um, by agent, I mean microbot increases. But the main motivation behind my PhD work was that um, when you have multiple of these mag small magnets to work together in close proximity, they tend to stick together irreversibly. And that happens because of a strong interagent magnetic forces uh, between agents. And that's something which used to be ignored by previous studies and became our main motivation. So let's look at what direction the field of magnetic microrobotics is moving and what the value of our work is compared to others. Beside our work, there have been other leading studies which benefit from quasi-static magnetic field actuation. For example, what you see in this video demonstrates magnetic swarm controlling biofluids done by Dr. Li Zheng and his group. In contrast, my PhD thesis tried to answer this key question, how can we control the motion of each member of the team independently when there is only a single control input available? Imagine how easier it is to make a cut using two micro robot hands than only one. The key assumption uh, behind my control um, design is that all magnets align with, uh, with external uniform field input simultaneously. And by changing the orientation of this external uniform field, we are able to shape the interagent magnetic forces among um, um, these small magnets. You see here a snapshot of our experimental setup. We, we used um, a three axial Helmholtz coil system and we put our uh, micro robots, for example, you see here micro grippers in a small tank, petri dish placed in the middle of uh, our coil system. And we 
vision and the position of these micro robot agents using top and side view camera. Here you see the animation of our multi agent control principle. Essentially, uh, when agents are too far, uh, we make uh, the, the magnetic moment orientation, which is dictated, dictated by external uniform field to be parallel to the separation vector. So one more time here. Note that uh, our control input is the angle which is made between uh, the orientation of external uniform field with respect to the separation vector. And number two, the second module, um, behind our multi-agent control principle says that when two agents are too close, you just need to make the magnetic moment orientation perpendicular to the separation vector. As a result, they will uh, repel each other with full repulsion force. The third module says that when two magnets arrive at desired separation, uh, still, um, if you apply a input angle between zero and 90 degree, you will see that uh, the two magnets um, experience a transverse magnetic force that causing uh, the pair of agents to rotate. So it turns out that if we uh, reverse the sign of the control input angle, uh, the, the transverse force can be reversed. And that way you can accomplish not only control on the separation magnitude, but also the orientation of that separation vector. And finally, the fourth module says that if you apply um, a magnetic field gradient using the same coil system, you can externally apply a pulling force uh, externally that, cause, that by which you can uh, pull around the center of mass of the team of agents. So in, in overall, it is as if you are able to independently control the position of each agent of the team. And what I showed earlier, it was in 2D. And in our IJR uh, journal, we extend it to 3D, uh, and that's uh, animation, but using the same principle. And these uh, spheres are fiducial that tells you when agents arrive at desired separation. Moving forward, we use the same multi agent principle introduced, um, and we synthesize a control by using PID controller by which we can accomplish 3D independent control of agents uh, following desired trajectory. It could be either line shape path or ellipse shape path. You see here top view and side view cameras and the control input, uh, which is uh, given by uh, orientation of external uniform field and also magnetic field gradient are shown by uh, indicators uh, at the bottom in real time that you can follow. And you see the transient response on the right side of our configuration, joint, joint configurations, which is separation and its orientation aligned with the controlled input angle psi and alpha at the bottom. Awesome. So now uh, we, we see here um, the same uh, control law used uh, for pick and place task applied on uh, two magnetic microgrippers. And this is the uh, first time someone uh, was able to control, uh, to somehow autonomously control, the independently control the position of two functional magnetic micro robots in 3D. Of course, the plant path is um, something prescribed by the user, but in, in upcoming slides, you will see that uh, how we are gonna make it fully autonomous. But uh, I just press the bottom and two microgrippers follow the path. They arrive at, at destination to pick up targo uh, cargos and then uh, they get close and bring it to the target. Note that the um, positioning uh, between two agents uh, is, is uh, implemented through interagent force control that I just explained. Awesome. Now the question will be, how can we uh, accomplish control over two, more than two agents, right? And that's what uh, we did. Um, we introduced uh, two uh, ways to generalize the same multi-agent control principle. 
One is from a control perspective using optimization-based controller. And uh, we reproduce the same result as our PID controller uh, implemented by optimization-based controller. And looking at the RMS position error, you see that it turns out that the optimization-based controller acts even better using an, an under-actuated type of electromagnetic coil system that we use, which is kind of promising. The second solution we introduced was from robotics perspective using RRT-based navigation. RRT stands for rapidly exploring random tree. And as you know, using RRT, it would be easy to pick a sample and check the non-holonomic constraint behind our system and the collisions for, for highest dimensional systems similar to, to our case. You see here a simul MATLAB simulation that uh, we use RRT to design the path, feasible paths from a start configuration shown on the left figure uh, to reach to the goal configuration. And RRT nodes uh, are, which is taken randomly are shown here. And also the ultimate path generated is shown in yellow. So this is in configuration a space built up by separation magnitude per heading angle and center of mass coordinate. Uh, but you can map it to the real world space, which is shown on the right figure. Uh, the planned path by RT is shown by Cyan and Green for each agent uh, from start to goal. But note that the, the actual current position of agents would be always different than the planned path. So we need a tracker to be designed, which is done here uh, and shown in the black uh, trace. So that tracker, can be either implemented by our optimization-based controller, or you can use, you can establish a second routine uh, RRT to take care of the tracker um, generation. And that guarantees that agents can be pushed uh, uh, back to the, to the plant path while avoiding obstacles. In this slide, uh, we did the simulation and the, the hope was to show that uh, is, uh, how important is a feasible choice of path because our system is non-holonomy, so the path taken should be should be feasible. Another benefit of RRT is in its capability to avoid obstacles not only in follow in, in the in, in the uh, path following but also in the path tracking when you want to automate this system. Here is our experimental uh, result in two D. And uh, we initially use our proximity controller implemented by optimization-based controller to bring agents to the, to the start point. But once they arrive at the start point, we directly use the control input sequence written by RRT plan path planner. And uh, it is run in an open loop um, manner. And that shows, uh, that validates our, the, predict the predictability of our, um, model, kinematic model used here. And in this slide, um, we, we you see an example of our uh, of multi-agent uh, micro factory conducted. So what's remarkable here is that um, we use RRT to, to solve this uh, problem. And you see the top view of our experimental um, imaging plane of course, the maze are uh, virtually overlaid on our experimental plane, but the motion is what happens in experiment. So from the start, right at the start, RRT is requested uh, to generate feasible paths in cyan and green, uh, such that they avoid obstacles, static obstacles and maze walls. Um, and the goal is to bring it to the target zone. So the magnetic actuation is capable to navigate these agents to those target blue zones uh, points. And uh, these microspheres could represent magnetized cells and the maze could represent MEMS tool that could be up either, uh, could be a cantilever tool to lice multiple cells in parallel uh, at once, or it could be this, this um, actually um, maze um, arms can resemble a grip, gripping a squeezer tool to measure the mechanical stiffness of uh, these uh, microspheres or microcells, basically. 
by which you can characterize their types. And the connecting line, look at the connecting uh, red lines. Uh, my apologies. Uh, these connecting red lines uh, is um, taken by look ahead algorithm that guarantees agents can tightly track the feasible generated path by art. In this slide, as you see, I just go to play it back. Here we go. Looking at the cell testing literature, they were using syringes to place the cells manually. And it's sort of struggling as they have to wait until a single cell would be trapped to the uh, zone test, uh, the test zone. And this is another motivation that someone can integrate our magnetic actuation technology for either parallel cell testing or manipulation. And finally, we use the same multi agent control principle, um, and what implemented through RRT navigation, based navigation, uh, to do pick and place, the same thing that I showed you earlier for optimization based controller. So, here one, uh, you see top view and side view in, in real 3D experiment, and RRT is requested to generate the planned path, and it can be done autonomously here. Of course, the maze and those obstacles are visually overlaid by the actual motion is what happens in the ex real experiment here. And again, once they grasp the, the cargoes, the RRT requested new feasible set of paths to the final target. And they follow the feasible path. Once they arrive at the desired target, they will release the cargoes. Our control input uh, magnetic field and force are shown by indicators that you can follow. Excellent. Uh, now to wrap up my talk, let me please summarize that uh, our multi-agent system was developed here and characterized for a team of magnetic microbots in my thesis. The other actuation was defined and characterized for this system. Several control tools were provided to solve this underactuated problem. And as conclusion, the proposed motion controlled by my PhD work has been shown in, in my thesis. You can go ahead and read the details, please, if, you, if you're interested. Uh, it was shown that uh, this approach have the potential to be extended to more than two magnetic agents. And in terms of future research direction, it is recommended to employ an advanced nonlinear controller to make the current method more robust for in vivo applications. Thank you very much. Zoran and everyone else for listening. And I would be happy to answer if you have any questions. Thank you. Great. Very good presentation. Um, very beautiful work. Uh, and it also was very easy to follow. I didn't know that you are from Isfahan. Uh, that's actually uh, a very beautiful town. I've seen some YouTube videos from some travelers you know, around the world who go and then you know, talk to people or just visit places mm -hmm. and then yeah. Thank you very awesome. much. <laughs> Thank you. Nice you. OK, let's now go to some more technical questions. So uh, you have you put two particles uh, in the let, let, let's say for this first uh, first work where you where you are controlling the orientation and the, and the trajectory. So, you know, in the in, in the motivation video uh, from 2009, this slide three, uh, so the, the, the magnets there are stacking. How do you prevent in your case that they get stuck? Excellent question. That was the main motivation behind my PhD work actually. Um, so we did it um, by, so it was recognized even earlier behind my work that uh, someone can uh, apply an uh, upright field to the plane. Uh -huh. of okay, okay. All of a sudden, you can uh, basically disperse all the magnets at once, right? Mm -hmm. So this this has this was done earlier, uh, but uh, then we decided to look at uh, how does the interagent magnetic forces look like, and we derived those equations and the relation, and we look at those interagent forces. How do they respond? Uh, respond. Uh, to the magnetic uniform field orientation as our controlling. So 
if you change the orientation of this uniform field in 3D, mm -hmm. uh, these interagent magnetic forces can be shaped. They can be either made to be repulsive or attractive, or you can make those uh, radial um, attraction and repulsion to be zero. And by reversing the sign of the orientation of the uniform field that is applied externally, by reversing the sign, you can reverse the transverse force be besides the re uh, radial force. Mm -hmm. So that has um, that turned out to be a good control lab that we used uh, to build up a PID controller. Um, and by changing the orientation of the field, we could we could manage to adjust the spacing between agents, and also by applying a pulling force you can pull around the center of mass of this the, the agents so that's how we are we we, we never let them to a stick I yes mean, that's the rule you don't and want to let them to a stick that became on a stick a follow-up question for example when you put a particle in your um uh, in your workspace or let's say two particles how do you know the easy axis uh or okay let's say you put the field up and then they uh, they orient the particles upwards with the with the easy axis. Uh, yeah, and then you know the easy axis. Okay, now I also answered the question that I wanted to ask. <laughs> I know it's very it's a still long way to to go in in, in medical direct delivery applications, mm -hmm. but this is just a start. One of the starts, and um, imagine you have a capsule with multiple of these uh, micro magnets. Mm -hmm. uh, micro, uh, which is uh, or microcells, which is magnetized. Uh, you really need a high strength field initially, um, and it should it's like an impulse to get them yep. separate, and mm -hmm. then your are this multi agent control principle comes to play. Yep. So, um, have you considered, for example, if you just let's say if you have a magnet core and non magnet shell, kind of. Uh, Magnet, magnetic, non-magnetic core shell particle, probably uh, how will that affect like in terms of, I don't know, like preventing this uh, bundling, will, will that work somehow? Or of course, that's definitely not your work, but I'm just kind of trying to, to fantasize together with you how, uh, how this can be used in, in different contexts. This is a very clever, um idea to explore and uh, if i understood your point that you're saying that we we put some soft shells around these micromagnets mm -hmm. so we have magnets in the core and yeah. the shell around it is soft yeah. to minimize the uh, contact force at the beginning at least yeah this is a very nice idea and i have been i, I believe there are many researches done in this area this is definitely cool but then again the question is uh, in our control principle, we treat each of these um, shell-based shell uh, magnet cores to be, be modeled as a dipole. So mm -hmm. you should make sure that uh, uh, they are they are really. I mean, you you fit each each of these magnets enough with uh, and make them strong magnetically. Uh, you should feed it with enough number of uh, nanoparticles, mag magnetic nanoparticles. And there should be a minimum separation that should be always uh, um, try to be meet, to be met actually. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, but, but uh, still there is a long way to go and there are different ways to treat this problem. And you are using Helmut coils, three nested Helmut coils. Am I correct in your setup? Yes. And then here, yeah, if you can just probably this slide uh, six uh, uh, or slide eight, uh, like, uh, yeah, here. So, so you are inducing here uniform magnetic fields. But then sure. if, you, if you kind of go through this four, uh, 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 these kind of small insets where you have videos, like- Oh, and it, yes, the control yeah, principle. Yeah, yeah, this. Okay, can you go to the fourth one? You have four these kind of insects. So here you're saying that you have to apply a gradient. How you can apply a gradient with a Helmut coil? This is a, a great question we have seen before as well. Uh, thanks for bringing it up. Um, so so it, that's the trick that you cannot simultaneously 
generate, use this uh, three axial Helmholtz coil system, which is under actuated type of coil system, to generate simultaneously both uh, uniform magnetic field and uniform magnetic field gradient. But, which is true, but you can, you can uh, constrain uh, your magnetic field gradient using the same coil system. So, which uh, we electronically in our DAC system, we uh, we make sure that uh, the uniform field is dominant, right? And once uh, you set up your uniform field, you just need to slightly impose some uh, residual current on the same pair of coil to superimpose a saturated field gradient on top of your uniform field gradient. So we do mm. it by changing the polarity electronically through our DAC system. But it's very important that we, this will be at the expense of uh, making uh, your magnetic field gradient um, saturated and weaker than your mm -hmm. dominant field uniform. Yeah, yeah. You're right okay. that there are, there are fully actuated type of coil system like Octomac that gives you much better performance. Yeah, yeah, they give a very high uh, gradients, like because you have a core there. Here you have air. Hmm. Exactly. Um, and then you also mentioned that uh, uh, you are examining this in context of biological applications. So have you done some uh, in vitro or in vivo experiments with some, I don't know, uh, tissues or, or, or cells, or now there is even this organ on a chip uh, or yeah yeah something like that like more more really into more applied uh, or everything is just uh, in vitro and it's just uh, more the engineering aspects are, are presented thank you for for bringing up the, the, this great question um, just very quickly you guys uh, I uh, encourage everyone interested to look at my thesis and we have uh, done uh, some uh, more exploration on 3D three axial Helmholtz coil system and prove that you can still use, generate pulling force in 3D uh, using the same control principle. So go ahead and look at it if you're interested. But back to your great question, uh, to some extent, yes. So if you look at this slide, um, it was at the beginning of my PhD that you can use the same attraction principle by aligning uh, your microparticles. So what you see here is some microbullets and microparticles that are magnetized. And if you apply a field, magnetic field, uh, strongly such a way that these particles are aligned with respect to the separation vector, you can get a chain of particles. So this is what we studied in uh, Soft Matter Journal. Mm -hmm. And we did some finite element analysis. But Eventually, um, other groups from perhaps Legion group, they explored collective behavior of uh, reconfigurable magnetic droplets via dynamic self-assembly media. So that gives you an idea, how can one use the same control principle to control, uh, for example, five uh, micro, soft microparticles here to get some sort of collective behavior that can be used for cancer therapy or things like that mm -hmm. in ultimate. So here, they use the same control principle we applied to a pair of separate a pair of micro magnets, but they apply it at each time to to the to to, to the set of uh, to to the pair uh, which has the mean separation value of the whole set. So they they apply that uh, field and control principle to that particular pair uh, at each time, and that way, in on time average, they can control the, the separation between the five particles at once. So that I hope you can get some idea how to develop this to for drug delivery in future. Mm -hmm. For content okay. and behavior. Uh, but again, these are all building first the engineering tools and then later apply them in uh, probably in uh, animal testing, uh, or in some kind of in vitro tissue or organ testing. Uh, so, so first, the stress is on the development of the engineering tools. Am I correct? Yes. And all those so control algorithms, particle types, um, 
the physical principle to be optimized to really work. Uh, exactly. This is a still in, in, in engineering perspective point. Yeah. Um, but uh, I, I believe uh, people have um, investigated the same behavior, swarm behavior professor mm -hmm. um, yeah. by, pro by some groups like Dr. Zhang. They, they apply, um, they investigate swarm uh, magnetic control uh, study in um, using ultrasound imaging uh, mm -hmm. in, in, for in vivo applications. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I think with uh, all these questions uh, and all these very accurate answers, we conclude today's talk. Thank you, Mohammed, for uh, giving such a beautiful talk. And I hope that in the future, uh, you're going to give another talk covering the work of your postdoctoral stay now at Harvard. I'm absolutely sure that you're doing some amazing work, but of course, as uh, you know, you cannot go public until uh, some more interesting results come up and then something goes at least into a publication form. And then, yeah, we all know how the game is played. So we have to wait for the next talk for probably months to, to a year or something like that. No pressure, it's up to you. <laughs> Let's see. Um, I'm very excited, as you mentioned, to um, make a bridge between medical microrobotics to those surgical robotics in future, especially based on magnetic actuation. So I'm also very excited. And let's see, and hopefully we all can uh, collaborate at some point. Thank you so Great. much. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you for this uh, opportunity. Have a good time.